Hey guys, good morning. So I'm working on uh, the P48 project today. It's our 1948 Chevy 3100 that we're doing the EFI swap. We're putting fuel injected motor in it and uh, getting some of the details worked out on fitment of the uh, TBI 350 uh, fuel injected motor that's in the in the truck now. So I'm working on little details today. My uh, solder gun took a crap on me, so. I've got to go get uh, a new tip for that and uh, I thought I would explain some of the little detail stuff uh, that's necessary at this point of the project to get this thing started. We need to get the coil mounted and, we, and wired in. The coil's not currently wired into the system. Uh, I have a separate relay for the ignition system that's going to power the coil. Um, so I have power provided but I don't have any of the wiring yet and uh, I haven't mounted the coil so that's what I'm working on right now and I found a solution to a problem here that I thought I'd share so this is a uh, this is our standard TBI coil that was mounted on the motor it normally mounts in the back of the intake manifold right underneath the uh, giant air filter housing that uh, is on these TBI 350s. So we're not running the stock air filter housing because um, they don't look very good. We're running a low profile standard carbureted air filter uh, that sits real nice and tight and low uh, on top of the throttle body and doesn't utilize the throttle body spacer or the air filter spacer that sits on top of the throttle body on a stock air filter application. So um, we're mounting it nice and low. Uh, the other problem that I have is where to mount the MAP sensor. Uh, the MAP sensor, I think, was mounted on that uh, air filter housing. Not sure exactly now, come to think of it, where it was mounted originally. But um, I'll show you guys what I'm going to do to uh, alleviate some of these problems and these, this little detail stuff that I'm working on right now with the motor. Uh, and then I'll start pulling fuel lines. Uh, this morning I've been doing, finishing up some wiring, uh, getting the fuel pump wired up, getting uh, the oxygen sensor and the vehicle speed sensor wired up uh, into the into the ECM harness, and all that stuff's done. So now, now I've got to get the ignition system sorted out. So I'm going to take you over here to the motor and show you uh, the problem that I ran into uh, and how I'm going to resolve those issues. And I think it's uh, a nice, clean solution. I think it's going to look great and uh, continue on with our theme of having things hidden and having, uh, you know, still having all the stock functionality and uh, compacting all of these components so that uh, they're not blatantly obvious when you open the hood and it looks nice and clean under the hood. It is going to be a rat rod custom, but. Um, you know, we can still do things uh, nice and clean and keep things uh, looking sharp under the hood. So I'm going to take you over here and show you what I'm working on. So here's what we currently have uh, for the motor. It's a TBI 350 Chevy. Uh, came out of a 94 uh, K1500 Silverado. Um, all stock, essentially. We're doing, we put a set of headers on it and uh, we're going to run a nice uh, X-pipe exhaust. Um, to make it flow a little bit better and um, here's where we're at. I went and stabbed the distributor back in place um, so I could start fitting all the ignition components and I temporarily uh, mounted up the alternator bracket and the AC uh, bracket, air conditioning compressor bracket so that I could make sure my wiring was in the right spots and um, clearances were going to work. So here's where we're at. So this is the motor with the accessory bracketry bolted onto, well, temporarily bolted onto it. And as you can see, we have things pretty clean under here. There's not uh, not a lot of wires um, running everywhere. We have uh, the harness loomed up here for the sensors, and I've stabbed the distributor back here into place. Um, some of these wires are disconnected. This is our oil pressure sensor sender. Uh, plug that I need to relocate onto our pressure sensor, which I've got to rotate a little bit. Um, and this is our tack signal wire that is about to get connected into the uh, harness for the coils. 
So this is our standard coil. I'll show you guys where it normally mounts here on the back of the intake manifold. Normally it would mount in this location here, which probably works great on a stock air filter equipped TBI motor. But as you can see, we don't have any clearance to mount the coil in that position uh, with our low profile air filter housing. And you know, one solution would be to mount it on the firewall and you know, run wires to it and make it work. Uh, but then you just have a big wart sticking off your firewall. And I want to keep the firewall clean. I'm going to weld all these holes up in the firewall that are unnecessary um, at some point once we start doing body work. But uh, I'm not at that point yet. And I don't want to add anything extra to the firewall. So what I figured out to do is I'm going to take the brackets here that mount the coil to the top of the intake manifold and I'm going to modify them a little bit. I have to take a little material off and I have to shorten the bolt holes uh, about a quarter inch to mount the coil sideways. So the coil is going to sit there we go. The coil is going to sit sorry about that. It's going to sit in this position once I uh, make those bracket modifications and it's going to sit nice and tight here on the top of the intake manifold something like that so we'll have plenty of room to run our wire uh, our power wires to the coil back into our loom and uh, our ignition wire is a 90 degree boot so it'll just come up and plug into the top of the distributor like normal um, and it'll keep it keep it relatively clean looking there in the back um, the other problem that I ran into was what to do with the map sensor. Uh, the map sensor, I thought about combining it into the coil bracket and maybe mounting this on the firewall because it's not too blatantly ugly. But we've got to run a vacuum line off of it and there is a plug that goes into it, which is this plug here. So the obvious solution, I think, for me anyway, is I'm going to mount it onto the bottom of the air filter housing like this in that position there. There's plenty of room for our plug. It'll clear our fuel lines and you won't be able to see it unless you really get under there and look. So, you know, it takes a takes a little bit of time to figure stuff out like this out, but the details are really, um, you know, really what make a, make a car and, and make a custom like this. Um, trying to keep everything clean and hidden and tucked away as possible, you know, unfortunately you can't hide everything. I thought about putting the coil on the inside of the uh, cabin underneath the dash, but, you know, coils make a little bit of a noise when they're firing and I don't really want to deal with having noises inside the car. So we're just going to leave it there in this relatively stock location, make a couple minor modifications to the bracketry, and I think everything will be great. Um, so that's something to think about when you guys are building cars, you know, try and keep stuff hidden, keep things clean and tucked away um, as much as possible. And, uh, you know, maybe it'll pay off in some show points. You never know. I thought I'd share with you guys some of the details, you know, some of the considerations you have to make when retrofitting, a, you know, a motor like this into the into an old vehicle. Hey guys, so I'm uh, finishing up work here on the the little pieces for the coil uh, that mount the coil into the back of the intake manifold. I repositioned it so I could clock the coil 90 degrees from where it normally would sit uh, to keep it under the back of the air filter. Um, so that's that's done. Those came out pretty decent. Um, gonna get that bolted in now, and uh, the map sensor. I've got the map sensor bolted to the bottom of our air filter base. Um, and originally, I was gonna mount this so that the map sensor was in the back. Um, unfortunately, as these things go, um, I had to turn the coil around 
uh, 180 degrees from the way I was going to have it oriented on the back of the uh, intake so that uh, the throttle cable would have clearance to reach the uh, throttle lever on our TBI throttle body. So to grant that cable enough room I had to flip this around and face the coil wire the other way. No real big deal as far as the coil goes but that caused an interference problem back here at the back of the uh, back of the air filter. There's just not enough room for the map and the coil. So the coil's got to live there. Um, that's just the right place to put it. Uh, so that stock coil wire will reach from a stock set of plug wires and whatnot. Um, so that's going to live there. And what I'm going to do is flip the air filter base around. You know, it's reversible essentially. Uh, it's a carbureted air filter base, and it fits the TBI throttle body with a little clearancing. Um, so I'm going to have to put the map in the front. Not ideal, but not a, not a huge deal. The map's pretty small. It's hidden pretty well under there. And I don't think it's going to be, uh, you know, an obnoxious looking wart on the, on the underside of our air filter here. So I'm going to go ahead and i got to clearance uh, just a couple little spots here since I've reversed it. I had already clearanced it uh, to mount it the direction I had it originally. And now I've got to spin it around 180 and there's just a little bit of clearancing i got to do on the sides to get the seat all the way. Uh, and I am using a... A filter base gasket so it'll seal nice and tight and um, there's no no air leaks here to be concerned about so I'm gonna get to grinding on this and um, get everything bolted into position I've got to extend the pigtail for the map sensor a couple inches uh, so I'm gonna get working on that now